I. So the bottom line is maybe it was where to go to work and you met the love of your life there. Maybe it was a career decision. I know the Google geniuses I saw here. I mean, I understand that their decision was to sell their technology at first. What if they made that decision versus to build their own culture? How would the world be different? How would their lives be different? Their impact. The history of our world is these decisions. When a woman stands up and says, no, I won't go to the back of the bus. She didn't just affect her life. That decision shaped our culture or someone standing in front of a tank or being in a position like Lance Armstrong and someone says to you, you got testicular cancer. That's pretty tough for any male, especially if you ride a bike. <laughs> right? You got it in your brain, you got it in your lungs. But what was his decision of what to focus on? Different than most people. What did it mean? It wasn't the end, it was the beginning. What am I gonna do? He goes off and wins seven championships. He never won once before the cancer because he got emotional fitness, psychological strength. That's the difference in human beings that I've seen of the three million I've been around. Because that's about my lab. I've had three million people from 80 different countries that I've had a chance to interact with over the last 29 years. And after a while, patterns become obvious. You see that South America and Africa may be connected in a certain way, right? Other people say, oh, that sounds ridiculous. It's simple. So what shaped Lance, what shapes you? Two invisible forces, very quickly. One, state. We all have had times. Have you had a time you did something and after you did it, you thought to yourself, I can't believe I said that. I can't believe I did that. It was so stupid. Who's been there? Say, I. I. Have you ever done something after you do it? You go, mm -mm -mm. that was me. <laughs> right? It wasn't your ability, it was your state. Your model of the world is what shapes you long-term. Your model of the world is the filter. That's what's shaping us. That's what makes people make decisions. We want to influence somebody, we got to know what already influences them. And it's made up of three parts, I believe. First, what's your target? What are you after? Which I believe it's not your desires. You can get your desires to goals. How many of you got a goal, a desire and thought, is this all there is? How many been there? Say aye. So it's needs we have. I believe there are six human needs. Second, once you know what the target that's driving you is and you uncover it for the truth, you don't form it, you uncover it. Then you find out what's your map. What's the belief systems that are telling you how to get those needs? Some people think the way to get those needs is destroy the world. Some people is to build something create something, love someone. And then there's the fuel you pick. So very quickly, six needs, let me tell you what they are. First one, certainty. Now these are not goals or desires, these are universal. Everyone needs certainty that they can avoid pain, at least be comfortable. Now how do you get it? Control everybody, develop a skill, give up, smoke a cigarette. And if you got totally certain, ironically, even though we all need that, like if you're not certain about your health or your children or money, you don't think about much more. You're not sure the ceiling's gonna hold up, you're gonna listen to any speaker. But. While we go for certainty differently, if we get total certainty, we get what? What do you feel if you're certain? You know what's gonna happen, when it's gonna happen, how it's gonna happen, what would you feel? Bored out of your mind. So God, in her infinite wisdom, <laughs> gave us a second human need, which is uncertainty. We need variety. We need surprise. How many of you here love surprises? Say aye. aye. Bullshit, you like the surprises you want. <laughs> the ones you don't want, you call problems, but you need them. So variety is important. Have you ever rented a video or a film that you've already seen? Who's done this? Get a fucking life. <laughs> right? Why are you doing it? You're certain it's good because you read it before, saw it before, but you're hoping it's been long enough you've forgotten if there's variety. Third human need, critical, significance. We all need to feel important, special, unique. You can get it by making more money. You can do it by being more spiritual. You can do it by getting yourself in a situation where you put more tattoos and earrings in places humans don't want to know. Whatever it takes, the fastest way to do this if you have no background, no culture, no belief in resources or resourcefulness is violence. If I put a gun to your head and I live in the hood, instantly I'm significant, zero to 10, how high? 10. How certain am I and you're gonna respond to me? 10. How much uncertainty? Who knows what's gonna happen next? Kind of exciting, like climbing up into a cave and doing that stuff all the way down there, total variety and uncertainty. And it's significant, isn't it? So you're willing to risk your life for it. So that's why violence has always been around, will be around unless we have a consciousness change as a species. Now you can get significance a million ways, but to be significant, you gotta be unique and different. Here's what we really need. Connection and love, fourth need. We all want it. Most people settle for connection because love's too scary. Don't wanna get hurt. Who here has ever been hurt in an intimate relationship? Say aye. <laughs> if you don't raise your hand, you'll have that other shit too, come on. And you're gonna get hurt again. Aren't you glad you came to this positive visit? But here's what's true, we need it. We can do it through intimacy, through friendship, through prayer, through walking in nature. If nothing else works for you, get a dog. Don't get a cat, get a dog. Because if you leave for two minutes, it's like you've been gone for six months when you show back up again five minutes later, right? <laughs> now these first four needs, every human finds a way to meet. Even if you lie to yourself, you need to have split personalities. 
But the last two needs, the first four needs are called the needs of the personality is what I call it. The last two are the needs of the spirit. And this is where fulfillment comes. You won't get fulfillment from the first four. You'll figure a way, smoke, drink, do whatever, meet the first four. But the last two, number five, you must grow. We all know the answer here. If you don't grow, you what? If a relationship's not growing, if a business is not growing, if you're not growing, it doesn't matter how much money you have, how many friends you have, how many people love you, you feel like hell. And the reason we grow, I believe, is so we have something to give of value. Because the sixth need is to contribute beyond ourselves. 